I'm just in this world. This world is like I came for a shopping. Ensure that I get home safely. And I believe you get home safely in Jesus' name. I say you get home safely in Jesus' name. You will not miss your flight. I say you will not miss your flight. In the name of Jesus. I've known people who missed their flight before. It wasn't a pleasant experience. I have never missed a flight before. Nearly, I was, we were to miss it some times ago, me and the whole family. And that day, I, I knew my wife could run. We were running from the road into, because the flight was already, they were already calling our flights. But since that day, I made sure, I, I was determined that I will never do this again. Because the palpation, the anxiety was just too much. Imagine four of us, we miss our flight and we have to buy another ticket. It's not easy. Amen. So whatever you need to do, make sure you don't miss your flights. And this flight to heaven is very important. So you must be prepared. So since that day, when it's time to travel, thank God for Google. Google will keep reminding me three days before. And once it's like five hours to that time, Google will send you a message again. Your flight is at Suzu time. I don't joke with it. I leave home. If I have to go and stay two hours at the airport watching home video, I shall go. Amen. So whatever you do, whatever you need to do to ensure you are prepared and you are ready for the flight, do it. And don't miss your flight. Tell anybody, don't miss your flight. Say, don't miss your flight. Praise the Lord. So today I'm talking about the gospel of the rapture. The gospel, the good news about rapture. And like I've been saying right from the beginning of the month, I welcome everyone joining us online. God bless you. We thank you for joining us. Come and celebrate everyone online. On Instagram, on Facebook, we celebrate you. God bless you. And we pray that the same grace, the same anointing that will be poured out upon People here on site, the same will be poured out upon you that you are online this morning in Jesus' name. And you will not miss your blessing. Come on, Jesus. Celebrate people. Celebrate them. Come on. All right. Quite a whole lot of information, but I believe the Lord will help us today in Jesus' name. So it's important. We're talking about the gospel of, of, of rapture. The good news about rapture. Because oftentimes when we hear the word rapture, the first thing that comes to our mind is fear and anxiety. Rapture. Praise the Lord. But from what you've been hearing right from the beginning of the month and what you're going to hear today, whenever they mention rapture, it should bring joy. And it should bring peace. And smile to your face in the name of Jesus. Because at the end of the day, your story of rapture ends in your victory. The story of rapture ends in what? Your victory. As Christians, we win. And the devil will lose. Come and say, I win. Say, I win. Jesus win. God win. We all win. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. It's important that we understand this. And I've been talking to you about the things that will happen in the world, the signs of the end times. And I said to you that the signs, the Lord reveals the sign to us or give us this indication in three categories. One of it is what will be happening in the world. The second one is what will be happening in the church. And the third is what will be happening to Israel. And if you missed us this Bible teaching, sorry, you missed. I'm not going to repeat myself. You can go on YouTube, it's there. Or you can go on Facebook, it's there. The sign of Israel. As a sign of the end time. We cannot jettison that. It's in the Bible. Praise the Lord. But today, I'll touch quickly about the sign of the church. Then I'll link that to rapture. Which is a culmination of what is happening to the church. If you remember the story very well, we are now in the church age. From the beginning of the Pentecost up to now, we are in the church age. The age of grace. The dispensation of grace, the dispensation of the Holy Ghost. We're in the time of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And that is what 
is happening to the church. We have looked at what is happening into the world. Paul wrote to Timothy. And Timothy said, the perilous times will arise. Jesus told us in the book of Matthew 24 that there will be so much of deception. And I mentioned that earlier on in the month. But while all of that is going on in the world, deception, uh, all manner of things, wars and rumors of wars, information technology things will be moving faster information will be getting to you faster than ever before there'll be advanced technology when while all of this is going on in the world what the bible tells us about the church is that in the last days in the eschatos the last of the last praise the lord the last of the last days that i will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh praise the lord so something different. So while the world is going through all those changes and calamities, the church will be witnessing an outpouring of God's spirit. Like never before. Praise the Lord. And you know, remember when I explained to you about Beth, Beth, Beth Pangs, a woman in labor. What Jesus said to us in Matthew that it shall be like a woman in labor. It comes initially sporadically. It comes and goes, it comes and goes. Somebody say, Pastor, have you been in labor before? Yes, I have been. If you are married, you've been in labor before. Because we carry the baby together. Amen. It comes and goes, it comes and goes, it comes and goes. And after a while, it begins to come every 30 minutes. And you see the man, hey! I was talking to, I was talking to one of our, today's brother Shea and sister Fumi's um, naming ceremony. Praise the Lord. I was talking to, to them one other day. Was it them or was another couple who the wife was already? In, yeah, okay, it's brother Lai. Is he here? I just called him and the wife was in the hospital and we were talking. I just said, hey! I said, what's that? He said, it's labor. <laughs> and she kept quiet again. And after that, I said, hey! I said, Lai, go. Go, go and labor. Praise the Lord. But after a while, the labor becomes consistent. It begins to overlap. Overlap, overlap. So the woman is not shouting, hey, inter at interval. The hey continues. If you are there at that time when she's shouting the hey, the Lord will help your ears. Praise the Lord. And that is what is happening. Things begin to increase. The crescendo begins to increase in the world. Things getting worse in the world. Wars getting worse. Deception. Uh, moral decadence continues like we are witnessing now. And on the other hand, in the church, there is a great art pouring of God's spirit upon the church. So a lot of people talk about proliferation of churches. We have not seen it will increase. Why? Because it can come to pass in the last days that I will pour out of my spirit. That word last day I told you is what eschatos. That is the last of the last of the last days. The end of the last. More churches will come. More power of the Holy Spirit that will move of the Holy Spirit everywhere. More healing, supernatural, will take place. Your sons and your daughters shall begin to prophesy. So don't be surprised one day you just wake up and your child begins to prophesy. Don't be surprised you wake up, you want to have your morning devotion and your little child will say, Mommy, kneel down, I want to pray for you. There will be great move of the Spirit in the church. So if what you are seeing now, you think, wow, we have seen nothing yet. Come and say, you have seen nothing yet. People will come in without anybody praying for them. They will get healed. The lame will walk. The blind will see. That is the promise of God for us as a church. Why we need it, God is equipping the church for this end time. Because the world will be in darkness, but we will be in the light and they will come to your light. Praise the Lord. In Isaiah chapter 2, it says, it shall come to pass in that last day that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be exalted above all the mountains and above all the hills, and nations shall flow to the church. Because the world will not have solution. And it's obvious you can see what is happening now that there's no solution. There's still no solution. We are still trying and trying and trying. The solution is with the church. And that's why the church at this point in time needs to wake up. The church needs to take the lead. Not politics taking the lead. The church must take the lead. They will come to the say The law will proceed out of Zion. And the church determines what is happening. Praise the Lord. Listen to me. This is your best hour. 
Come and say, this is my best hour. This is my best time. Your light is not relevant except it is dark. Like I said, darkness is a setup for light. The darker the world is, the brighter your light is. Amen. So when the scripture is saying, it shall be on that day that it, uh, how many women will hold on to the garment of one Israel? And people interpret it that there, there's going to be a big garment. No, it's a lie. Don't kid yourself. Nothing. It's just telling us that a lot of people will run to you and want to come to your God. Because they know there's salvation in Zion. But upon Mount Zion, there shall be what? Deliverance. And there shall be holiness. When evil, calamities are happening to them and it's not happening to you and you're not part of. They are crying, you're smiling. They are wailing, you're rejoicing. When men are cast down, you are saying there's lifting. Then they will look at you. There's something you know that we don't know. And that's why the scripture says, when men are cast down, you shall say what? There's lifting. And they talk about the children of Issachar. That they have understanding of the times and the season. And their brethren were at their command. They were in charge. They knew what's up. Come on, say, I know what's up. Say, I know what time is it. If you don't know what time is it, you'll be shocked. Come on, say, I know what time is it. So the children of Issachar, they knew what time it is. And because they knew what time is it, everybody was looking at them. They became the, they become the, the watch. Hallelujah. They become the timepiece for everybody. If you want to know what's happening, look at. If you want to know what's happening, look at. Tola. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come and say, I am the watch. I'm the stopwatch. So, in the church, there's a great outpouring. God is going to pour out His Spirit upon you like never before. There will be a mighty demonstration of the Holy Ghost in your life. Something different must be happening in the church as prophesied in Joel chapter 2. Verse 27, and fulfilled in the book of Acts chapter 2, when we witness the birth of the church. Jesus also said it in Matthew 6, 18, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Whatever is happening in the world cannot prevail in the church. Praise the Lord. The heartburn of the, the Spirit of God will be poured upon you. Let's read that scripture. Acts 2, 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days, said the God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. The sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream. Even old people will dream. And on my servant and my handmaid, I will pour out my spirit in those days of my spirit. In verse 19, and I will show wonders in the heavens, signs on the head beneath blood and fire and vapor and smoke. Then the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon into blood before the great day, before the notable day of the Lord. Verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the reason for the heart pouring. We have been sent into this world, into this calamitous world, into this perilous times, into this world so that we can rescue people. I talked about last week that you should be mindful of your own salvation because before you can save others, you must be sure that you are saved. Praise the Lord. So, I, now that I know I'm guaranteed, my, my salvation is guaranteed, then it's God has equipped me as a Christian to ensure that as many people I can rescue, I must rescue them from this calamity that is coming. Praise the Lord. And that's why I said, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what shall be saved. But in Romans chapter 10, verse 13 to 15, it says the same thing. Romans 10, verse 13 to 15. It said, and whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But there's a question, there's a caveat there in verse 14. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? Romans 10, 13 to 15. I need it to be fast, put it on the screen quickly. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 14, that's the caveat. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on, in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So you see, the reason why God pour, is pouring out his spirit upon us is so that we can tell them so that they can believe and be saved. Come and say, tell them. So that they can what? Believe and be saved. Praise the Lord. And how shall they preach 
except they be sent. God has sent you. In Acts 1, 8. Said, and you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall become what? Witnesses. Come and say, I'm sent. Uh-huh. I can say, I'm sent. Say, I'm sent. I'm sent to rescue as many as possible. I can say, I'm sent to rescue as many as possible. Say, I'm here on a rescue mission. Say with confidence, I'm here on a rescue mission. Your own salvation is guaranteed. You are going to heaven if you are born again. You are not going to miss the flight. You know what Jesus said? He said, behold, I come quickly. And my what? Reward is with me. I come quickly and my reward is with me to pay everybody. So, you, when it comes, the fact that you are born again, you are saved, you make heaven. But if you are not doing what you are supposed to do, it is where the problem is, your reward. Reward. So let's leave that. We'll talk about that. But now, here you are. You have, you have an assignment. You are sent to the rescue people. Come and say, I'm here on a rescue mission. So we are here on a rescue mission. That's what we are called and equipped to do. To ensure that as many people as possible will go with me. Will not miss the flights. We're here to save as many as, as, many, as, many as possible from the wrath from the devastation that is approaching, fast approaching. The tribulation is fast approaching. Everything is pointing towards it. I don't know if you heard this morning that it has become, that they're, 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 they're passing a bill in the United Kingdom that anyone that does not take the vaccine must not be allowed access into any medicals. Must make sure that the person run down Financially. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Tell your neighbor, it's coming. Say it's coming. The stage is being set. You know what I said when you go to a movie and everything is, they've stopped the adverts. Once they stop the advert, what is happening? Movie is about to start. And the countdown will start. Ten. Nine. Listen, we are in the countdown. Somebody say, hey. The countdown can be two years, can be three years, can be four years, can be five years, can be seven years, can be eight years, can be ten years, can be fifteen years. I don't know. Jesus said, nobody knows. We know the signs of those times, but we don't know the real time. And that's why it's important that we are prepared. And that's what Jesus, that's what Paul told us when we read last week, that brethren, you are not in the dark about those things because you are children of light. Come and say, I'm not in the dark. I understand the times. So I'm prepared. So we are on a rescue mission. There's a film. I'm talking about a film. You know, when you, when, when a house is burning, I believe, God, I believe that for Nigeria too. When a house is burning, who do you see? Who are the people that they call? When you call 911, who are the people that comes? The firemen. To do what? To put off the light and to rescue people, isn't it? And when the house is burning, when people are running out, what will the firemen be doing? They run into the fire. Have you watched that movie before? They run into the fire and begin to rescue people. They're so passionate about their work. They don't care about the fire that is burning. Yes, they have put on God as equipped them. I mean, they have been equipped with the, with the correct uh, safety gears. And they are so ready. And they enter into the fire. And they snatch people, carry people, bring people out, carry people. So everybody is running out of the fire. The rescuers are running into the fire. That is your job. And that is why we are here. That's why you have the Holy Ghost. That's why he poured out his spirit on you. So that you can save as many as what? Possible. Come on, say, I'm on a rescue mission. Say it with confidence, I'm, a rec I'm on a rescue mission. So we're on a rescue mission. That's why we are called and we are equipped to do. We are here to save as many people as possible from the wrath that is fast approaching. However, as rescuers, we've got a point. We've got, we get to a point where our job is done. It becomes... Dangerous for us. Hello. If you have watched the movie before, it will get to a point that the commander of the of the brigade of the of the of the of the um, fire brigade 
We begin to call on radio. Alpha, beta, alpha, beta. Everybody evacuate. Everybody evacuate. The building is about to fall. So what he said is calling the rescuers. Come out, come out. Anybody that you have not rescued, that refused to be rescued, just leave them, come out because your life is more important. Before it collapses, the rescuers will leave. And that's the story of rapture. That's the story of what? Rapture. Before the devastation comes, before the desolation comes, before the tribulation comes, before the calamity comes, before the evil, the trouble comes, and God will come, take us away. Let's read that in the scripture. First Thessalonians. We read it. Chapter 4, verse 13 to 18. But I will not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we which are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore? Abi? Wherefore? That sounds like a Jebu language. Wherefore? Any Jebu people, person here. Wherefore? Wherefore any Jebu? What are you saying? Abi? <laughs> I want to say wherefore. I want you to smile because you are so serious now. <laughs> As if you want to catch a flight. <laughs> it's going to be a fun flight. Praise the Lord. When I take my children out, travel, they always want to fly Emirates. Because it's always fun inside Emirates. They will give them toys. Give them toys. Give them food. Toys again. So anytime we're flying, they say, which one are we flying? Emirates. I won't talk about the other flight, but there are some flights that we have flown. It was so boring. Even for me, it was boring. Praise the Lord. But this flight will not be boring. I said this flight will not be boring. Because say, it will be in a twinkle of an eye. Twinkle your eye. Pow. You have changed. Twinkle your eye. Like again. I said before you close your eyes and open it, you have relocated. Your heart of the fire. You are heart of the devastation. You are heart of the tribulation. You have relocated. And you will be seen on your tablet. See what is happening on earth. Hallelujah. Oh, Kalala. It's going to be fun in heaven. If, are, if anybody has lied to you that heaven is boring, they are jokers. They are mockers. Are you having fun here? Everyone that we have heard that had a near-death experience, none of them wanted to come back. True or false? Have you not heard story? Everyone that had a near-death experience, none of them wanted to come back. I've had two people that narrated their story. They didn't want to come back because of what they saw. Ah! If this is heaven, let us stay here. When Peter, James, and John saw a glimpse of heaven, I will read that scripture and say, Jesus, where will they go again? No. They will stay here. I'm sure Peter is from the Hebrew clan. He said, oh boy, maybe we'll start shop. Eh? All our apostles, they are Hebrews, yes. <laughs> Say, oh no, man. <laughs> Peter, James, John, Ngamu, Kevin, our guy again. Hey. No, because maybe we'll stay here. I'll go open shop for you. Open market for you. Open market. Jesus, just stay with Elijah. <laughs> We've got the same market here. Praise the Lord. Everyone that had a glimpse of heaven did not want to come back. So why are you not eager to go? Because where they are is better than where we are. There's nothing compared 
Let's, I'll, I'll show you. Let's go. Let me not run after myself or before myself. Where was I? Yeah, I was at wherefore in your language. Wherefore, comfort one another with the same. What is comforting there is what I'm telling you now. The word cut, cut up. Say, we shall be cut up is the word in Greek called ap, ap, apazo, which means to snatch away. So imagine the rescuers in the fire helping people, grabbing people, and the commander is watching because he's watching the pillars of the building. He's watching the fire burning. He's watching them doing the mission, rescuing people, but he's watching to ensure that they don't die in the fire. So before the pillars begin to give way, before the roof of the building begins to collapse, because the rescuers are so engulfed in what they're doing, they might not want to hear, it snatches them. Within a twinkle of an eye, I would say, we will be what? Cut up. Blink your eyes again. Blink your eyes one more time again. That is how it will be. You just realize you have changed location. And you just look around and wow, what? Praise the Lord. I remember when my mother died. She waited for me to come back from work. All through the day, she didn't hit and when I got back from work at about 6 o'clock, she said, I've been waiting for you. I said, why didn't you eat? She said, I don't want the heat. I said, what do you want me to do? Can I take you to the hospital? She said, no. I said, why? She said, me that I've gone. Before I know what was gone, she was gone in my hands. But before she left, she was in pain. She was in agony. She had cancer, the ovarian cancer. Her stomach was extended. Food cannot go down. She was in so much pain. When I held her, she was in so much pain. But the moment she left, a peace came over her. I saw her change. And she died with a smile. Hallelujah. In a twinkle of an eye, you realize you have relocated. The last time I saw my mother, I didn't see her. They told me she's somewhere singing upstairs in a dream. I run, I climb, I climb, I kept climbing. I was just hearing her voice. She was singing in heaven. Hallelujah. But when rapture comes, I will see her again. I will see her again. Hallelujah. Listen to this. Comfort one another with a saying. Praise the Lord. What's the comfort here? God will take us away to a better place, away from tribulation that is approaching. This is something we should look forward to with eager expectation. Why? Number one, the gospel of right. Number one, you will be able to see your loved ones again. When rapture happens, it's a time to reunite. You love your mother so much, you love your father so much, you love your child so much, that loved one that has gone away is the time to reunite. The Bible says the people that are dead in Christ will be the people that will first of all be cut up. Then we that we are alive will be cut up with them in a twinkle of an eye. There will be a reunion. Lo and behold, I will just stand and say, Mom, because since she died, you know, I've, ne I've not seen her face. Even if I have a dream and say, Oh, Mom is there, I'll go there and I won't, I won't just see her face. I've been struggling. I want to see her face. But I know when rapture comes, there's going to be a reunion. Have you lost a loved one? One of the things that we grieve about when, we, when somebody dies is that I'm not going to see this person again. person that I'm used to seeing, we've been together for a long time, she gave back to me, oh, this is my child, I love this child so much, and somehow, somehow, listen to me, that's why he said, comfort each other. Because the time is coming, and it's very soon. When those people, you will see them again. Come say, you will see them again. Hallelujah. Is that not exciting? Hallelujah. I'm going to see them again. Praise the Lord. When I was preparing for the sermon yesterday, I just closed my eyes. I just saw Bami smiling at me. I tell you. I'm going to see him again. I'm going to see him again. I carried him when he was vibrant. And I also carried his lifeless body. 
And I know what it looks like. But I saw his face. He was holding a toy and he was smiling. Children, you will see them again. Hallelujah. Come on, show some excitement. Come on. You know, I, I, I thought I wasn't going to say it, but I know I can say it. I can say it. We're going to see him again. And it will be like nothing ever changed. Seriously. It will be like nothing ever changed. Because the state that you are going to see them again will not be the bad state. It will be in a glorious state. It will be in a glorious state. Hallelujah. And that's point number two. Your whole sick, dying body will be replaced with a brand new body. Fit for eternity. A body that cannot decay. A body that cannot get sick. A body that cannot be afflicted. A glorious body. Jesus is coming for a glorious church. When Jesus was going to die, the Romans, they beat him. We have on record that 39 stripes was on his back. You know the stripes that he, you know what they use in beating him now? You have, I've described that, that uh, what do you call it? The whip. The horse whip. The horse whip is laden with blade. So that when they wipe him, they pull it, it tears his skin. On the cross, they pierced his side and blood began to gush out. They slapped him, smack all over his face. But when he resurrected, when he resurrected, there was nothing on him. It's a grain of wheat, except it be planted in the ground, abides alone. When you plant a grain of wheat, you put it on the ground, it rots in the ground. But when it's going to grow up, it grows up with what? With a new body. So everyone that has died, they're going to be caught up with a new body brand new body. You that you are alive, that your body, you see when you give back to a child and begin to grow, the body begins to, it's the body that is dying. Your body is dying. It's just dying. One day the body will say, I think I'm done dying. I just want to go. Then the person will die. Because everything will begin to shut down. Praise the Lord. The body, this body is not fit for eternity. So what we have here, we are born again. Our soul has been renewed. Our spirit man is renewed. But we are in a whole body. We are just managing this body until that day. And that day come, this body will go. A new body will emerge. So you were sick before, you have rheumatism. You just realize that rheumatism is gone. You are lame before, there is no lame person in heaven. You are blind here or not, there is no blind person in heaven. You are here, you are suffering from high blood pressure. When the rapture comes, the high blood pressure disappears, you have a new body. Hallelujah. You are suffering from migraine when you, at the twinkle of my eye, you clear nothing. Your body is free. You'll be free from all ailments, free from all diseases. Imagine living a life, nothing is affecting your body. It's just brand new, like a brand new baby. Come on, say, I'm going to get a new body. We call it chassis. Tia rubber. Brand new body. That's what God is going to give you. And all of a sudden, just like that, the pain I used to feel, I feel them no more. The hustle I used to hustle, I hustle no more. Yes. The suffering I used to suffer, I suffer them no more. In a twinkle of an eye. I like that kind of flight. Not seven hours. Your back will ache. Your leg will ache. You stand up. There was one time that I went, I traveled and I, I fell sick inside the plane. My God. It was the longest flight in my life. Everybody slept in the plane. I couldn't sleep. I sit like this. It's hurting me. I do like this, it's hurting me. There's no posture that was not hurting me. I stood up, it's hurting me. It was hurting me rather. But this flight, twinkle of an eye, we're there. 
you will not die. You only change your address. You relocate straight away. And you look as if nothing ever happened. The only thing I see that there's a difference. Praise the Lord. Look at it. Verse 42. 1 Corinthians 15, 42, 44. So also, if the resurrection of the dead is soon in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. This our body is corrupt. We'll get an incorruptible body. It is sown in dishonor. It will be raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It will be raised in power. Hallelujah. It is sown in natural body. It will be raised in spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. These are natural body. It's a flesh and blood cannot what, enter the kingdom of heaven. This flesh is not going there. I'm getting a brand new body. Come on, I'm getting a brand new body. I'm getting a brand new body. So look at that pain in your body and tell the pain. Serve the pain notice. Just hold on. I'm getting a brand new body. The pain. I'm getting a body that pain cannot pain. In quotes. Amen. I'm getting somewhere. First Corinthians 15, 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. We shall be transformed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound. We were having the leaders meeting yesterday, and something there, Pastor Lajay, is that the trumpet? <laughs> so when you hear the trumpet, <laughs> praise the Lord. And the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed. He's saying again, we shall be changed. Come on, say, I shall be changed. I shall be changed. They confirm that you have sickle cell anemia. You shall be changed. Whatever the doctors have said concerning this body, <laughs> I will leave it behind. I'm getting a brand new body. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. This mortal must put on immortality. We will get a body that cannot die again. You will never die again. Because you have died once. You died when you gave your life to Jesus Christ. So if you are alive when Jesus comes, you bypass death. And you go to heaven. Praise the Lord. Let's go on. Come on. No more fear of death. Number three. No more fear of death. Rapture defeats death and turns you to immortals that can never die again. Rapture will what? Defeat death and turn you to immortals that will never, can never, because your body cannot decay. It is an incorruptible body. It will never die again. First Corinthians 15, 54. So when the corruptible shall have put on incorruption and the immortal have put on immortality, then it shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death has been swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is the sting? Oh, grave, where is the victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of the sin is the law. But thanks be unto God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Number four, our rapture story has a victory ending. Come on, say my rapture story. Oh, come on, say it. Come on, say my rapture story has a victory ending. It guarantees us victory over sin and death. One of the things that we fear most is sin, 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 sin. In heaven, no sin. You can't sin. Anything you do is right. Anything you do is right because you have a different body, you have a different spirit. Everything you do is unto God. It's unto the worship of the Lord. Amen. No sin. So you have overcome sin completely and you have overcome death completely. There's no fear of death. You see, everything that we do in life that makes us to be afraid, is the ultimate is death. Yesterday we were in the house and we just had dinner, and we were just in the living in the, in the upper room, praising God, and looking at our faces together, and we were hearing, bow, bow, bow. I just realized my wife's countenance changed. I heard bow again. I said, what was that? I said, it's banga. <laughs> I won't call it. I said, it's fireworks. Okay, and she paused. She looked at me. Mm. Then we heard the sound again, bow, go, da. So Mitchell, I say, what was that again? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Why were we concerned? <laughs> if it was gone. <laughs> then guess what? My woman of God went downstairs. Everybody, 
put off the TV, switch off the light, go to bed. Bedtime, fast track. And she came upstairs again. We kept hearing the sound. And to make sure we have peace, and I'll call the security again. Oh boy, what was that? Say, sir, is firework. I said, Are you sure? I said, We've seen the lights. When you know the sign, you are at peace. The guy was not even shaking in his way. I said, oh, What was that? I said, Sir, is banger. I said, Are you sure? I said, I said, It's banger, sir. It's knockout. I said, Why? He said, We have seen the light there. Somebody's throwing fireworks. Then I calmed down and I looked my, at my darling. Fireworks. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's fireworks. It's not yet time. But when rapture comes, you're not afraid to die because you cannot die. You relocate, you are in a place where death has lost its power. Sin has lost its power. You're not afraid. There's no fear of anything. You know how many times you get afraid in a day? That's why the Bible wrote to us 365 times in the Bible. Fear not because everything will make us afraid. You see cockroach, you're afraid. Rat is too much. <laughs> if some people see rats, they will not enter the house again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The other day, Monjola came to wake us up in the middle of the night. And I said, he knocked my door. I said, officer, what's happening? I said, I'm hearing movement in the ceiling. Movement in the ceiling. <laughs> I said, my friend, say, daddy, I'm hearing movement in the ceiling. Come and see. I said, good daddy. I woke, I woke up. I followed him to his room. I said, sleep on your bed. I sat down. I was, I turned it to a study time. I began to study. After 15 minutes, I didn't hear anything. I said, my friend, stop all those dreams that you're dreaming. Eh? You better sleep. Praise the Lord. Every time, the smallest thing will make us afraid. You are going to get to a place where nothing will make you afraid again. You are liberated from the bondage of fear. And that scripture will come to pass that God has not given us a spirit of what? Fear. But of power of love and of the word sound man. Our rapture story ends in a victory. Number five, rapture is not your hand, but the beginning of a better life. A more glorious life with Christ. Not in Christ. You are with Christ in heaven. There are two different things. You are in Christ here because he needs to secure you in him. You are hidden in Christ in God because he needs to put. But then you are not in Christ. You will be with Christ. Look at what he says. You will be with me. In John 14, verse 1 to 3. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. For in my father's house there are many mansions there. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you will also be. Praise the Lord. I remember one of my friends that was in Abuja for a long time, and he was coming to Lagos. I said, are you coming with your wife? He said, I'm not coming. I'm coming alone. I said, why? So that I can prepare the place for them. And he came to Lagos. He bought a house, furnished the house, bought a car for himself and his wife, got everything ready, and he went back to Abuja and brought them so that where he is, they can be. He brought them to a place that is prepared. He's preparing a place for you, and he's coming back to take you to the place where he has prepared for you. He said, in my father's house, there are many mansions there. I've got a mansion in heaven, right? I said, I've got a mansion in heaven. You think you're living in a good place here? Forget it. Where you're living is Ramshaku. I don't care how beautiful your house is. It's in the Koyi, it's in Lekki, it's in Banana Island. It's Ramshaku compared to the mansion that I have in heaven. Have you seen my mansion in heaven? Have you seen my mansion in heaven? It's a high that I've not seen. Yes, I've not heard. It has not come to the imagination of men. What God has prepared for them that love him. There's nothing here that can be compared to what awaits you in heaven. Praise the Lord. Are you with me? Are you flowing with me this morning? I'll read this part in uh, New Living Translation. It says, don't let your heart be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There's, there is more than enough room in my father's home. We're not going to be squatting. There will not be squatters in heaven. I said, there's not going to be squatters in heaven. 
Praise the Lord. Okay? There's not going to be landlord or tenant. We'll all be landlords. Nobody will come and tell you that you have rent and you begin being. Anytime you're a landlord, you see your landlord, your heart goes, dust. No way. No more rent. I become a landlord. Amen. Are you not excited about this? Come on. Clap. You know why some people cannot clap? Because they don't know what it means to pay rent. They don't understand. But some people understand. When the time for rent is coming, not only rent, it coincides with school fees. Hmm? And everything jammed together. And as they pay your salary, you're already sad. <laughs> I mean, you receive a lot and you're sad. <laughs> because, no, because you know the lot has a name. He's going. The person I want to collect it is waiting. All of that will be gone. All of that will be gone. I say all of that will be gone. You don't need money to buy. Anything you want, just desire, it comes. And that saying will come to pass. My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. His riches in glory. So I need to go see this person at the other side of heaven. And I'm there. I'm there. Instantly. Praise the Lord. I want to help your imagination. Give me more five minutes and I'm close now. Praise the Lord. Are you enjoying this? All right. So, so now where am I you going to be? So imagine where Jesus is in heaven. Imagine where Jesus is. He's in heaven. Yes. That's where we will be. We will not die. We will only relocate to a better place. Imagine the best place on earth. I remember one scripture in the book of John that some disciples, some John's disciples, they follow, the Bible said, where is Jesus? And John pointed them to Jesus. You remember that scripture? And they followed Jesus, right? And when they got to where Jesus was living, they didn't come back to John. They didn't come back to John. That day, they relocated because they saw that, ah, John, wilderness, eating honey. <laughs> no. And they got to Jesus' place. They didn't tell us how the place is, but when the Bible says when they got there, they didn't go back to John. Imagine where Jesus will be now. The Bible says he's in heaven. Imagine the best place on earth. Imagine the best city on earth. You say Dubai. Fantastic. You've been to Dubai before. Where everything is working. Go to China. Go to Guangzhou. Go to Shenzhen. Where everything is working. Everything is like glass. Imagine the best place on earth. Listen to me. The best place on earth cannot be compared to what heaven looks like. And I'll show you in the scripture. Just one minute. Since we go. None of these places. Dubai. LA. Where Pastor Ladi came from. Zurich. Singapore. China. None of these beautiful places can be compared to what you Find in heaven where God is taking you to. Everyone that we know that has, that has okay, I've, I've told that when Jesus showed Peter and, and they saw the glimpse of heaven, they said, Look, we're not going anywhere again. Let us stay here. Let us stay here. You know what they said? Let me read that scripture. Mark 9 1 to 5. And he said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. Verse 2. And after six days, Jesus taketh him, with him, Peter, James, and John, and he leads them into the high mountain apart in themselves. And he was transfigured. He was changed before them. And his raiment became shining exceedingly white as snow, as no other fuller on earth can white them. Listen. And there appeared unto them Elijah and Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. They were having a conversation. And Please. I'm going to read it in New Living Translation. Six days later, Jesus took Peter and James and watch this. I want you to listen to this. 
Pick Jesus to Peter and James and led them to a high mountain alone. And as the men watched, Jesus' appearance was transformed and his clothes became dazzling white. Listen to this. Far whiter than any earthly bleach could ever make them. Far whiter than any earthly bleach. Parazon, jik, ipo, no matter. You see, they have not made the kind of bleach on earth that will make that white cloth to be white the way they saw it. There's nothing that has been made now on earth that can be compared to what is in heaven. That is what I'm telling you. There's no beauty or glory here on earth that can be compared to what awaits you in heaven. He said, eyes have not seen it. It has not come to the heart of men. It has not come to the imagination of men what God has prepared for you and I. We will obviously continue to see each other because Jesus transformed and he saw Elijah and Moses and they were having what? A conversation. The first person I want to say, I want to see my mother. The next person I want to say, I want to see Pastor Bimbo. Pastor Bimbo, tell me what happened in that plane that day, please. I just want to know for my own understanding. Praise the Lord. They were having a conversation. So imagine some questions in your heart. My wife and, my wife and I watched a video on, yesterday on Instagram. Very funny, hilarious. And the guy said, he went to somebody and said, sir, sir, excuse me. Um, sorry, help me. I need your help. Say what? Say my uncle died two weeks ago. I said, so what? I said, hey. But there was a land dispute that he had before he died. And some people are about to take the land. I said, uncle, wait now. As I was saying, uncle, wait. I want to tell him. And the man was like, so my, what my uncle needs now, I'm telling him, what he needs now is that he needs a body to enter into so he can go and solve the land dispute. <laughs> and he said, I should just touch, when I touch you with this thing, you will be able to enter into it. Before he stretched for this hand, the guy cheered me. <laughs> what am I saying? See, there's nothing here. There's nothing that we have seen. We will obviously be, be interacting and talking to each other and dissing each other. When we are transformed, I will see everyone in the maker. Ah, everyone is waiting. What happened to that? Your pot belly. You are not tall, dark, and handsome, and slim and beautiful. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We will have conversation. We will make jests. Amen. Listen, we can go anywhere we want to, whenever we want to. Just say it or desire it. And it will come to pass. In verse 8, and God is able, coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, and God is able to make all grace abound towards us that we have all sufficiency in all things, everything. And God will generously provide all our needs. Then you always have everything you need at any time you want it to come. You don't need to beg anybody. There's no technology or innovation or advancement that we have seen here on earth that can be compared to the one that exists in heaven. Everything we see here are just trying to catch up with what is currently exists in heaven. John the Revelator saw heaven. And the way he described heaven, look at it, I'm coming for a landing. And the, and the building of the building was, I say, in Revelation 21, 18. Now I'm rushing now because of time. Revelation 21, 18, 19. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper. And the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundation of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was Jasper and blah, blah, blah. So what John saw when he got to heaven was a city. And listen to me. The only thing in the days of John, the only beauty that he can use that can be, that can be compared to what was seen at all was the temple in Jerusalem. Because that was the only beautiful sight in Jerusalem. So when God showed him a revelation of heaven, he could only, the only thing he could compare it to was the temple in Jerusalem. And he was trying to describe to us that, look, this kind of temple I'm seeing here, it can't be compared to what we see. You know, even though the description of the temple in Jerusalem said the walls are made of precious stones, it can't be compared. Listen to me. If John was to write now, he would not talk about temple. He would write, say, what I'm seeing now, I'm seeing myself walking on a glass. Doors are opening unto me everywhere. Everywhere is fully air-conditioned. There's no heat, there's no sweating. There's no NEPA, there's no PHCN. There's no AC, but everything is cool. The regulator himself is gone. When you are, when you are hot, you get cold. When you are cold, you get warm. 
If John was going to see heaven now, he would see, he would be able to compare it with somewhere like Singapore, somewhere like China, that everything is working. Today in China, they don't even spend money. You want to buy, you just order. If John was going to talk now, he would, talk about, he would be talking about artificial intelligence. He would be talking about tablets. Mind you, the first tablet was written by God. What did he give to Moses? On what did he write the commandment? On what? On what? On tablet. From where? From the cloud. From the cloud. He wrote on the tablet from where? The cloud. Where are your information now? Where are your pictures now? Where are your videos now? It's in the cloud. When Jesus is going to come, I would say Jesus is going to come and descend upon Mount Zion and all eyes will see him at once. How? In the clouds. During the end SARS, what happened? DJ switch, switch on our mobile phone. CNN connected. Sky News connected. Everybody was watching it live and die. When Jesus is going to come on Mount Olive, which is in Jerusalem, everybody will see it at once. So the technology that we are seeing here is just trying to catch up with the technology in heaven. Have we heard of UFO before? On identifying flying objects. And the last one I saw, they said they, some, 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 some uh, uh, aeroplanes in America were pursuing it and they were pushing, they were very close and when it got to a place, it just, uh, phew, just disappeared in front of them. And they didn't see it again. What's the brain behind artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence is a mechanism trying to make every machine to be like human being. They have not been able to do that. They've done robotic engineering. It's to make robots to begin to act like but the robot cannot have emotions. We are just playing catch up with what is available in heaven. So imagine the greatest technology. You'll be in heaven and you want to see what is happening on earth. You do like this. And you see their video. You see what they are going through. I'm tired. Next. Let me see what's happening in Djibouti. Rise to your feet. 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 So I'm just helping your imagination. The same way Paul, John was trying to help our imagination, was painting the color of the temple that the streets of heaven are made with gold. The walls are made with jasper. So the place you are going, when you be at it in a twinkle of an eye, if God help you, you are in the middle of Oluwaye or Mushi, Olosha, in the twinkle of an eye, and you are transported, and you just realize that you are no longer in Mushi, and you just look around. The kind of beauty that you have never seen before in a twinkle of an eye. Lift up your hand to heaven. The last point. Number six. Rapture is your flight to heaven without death. And being saved is your flight ticket. Being saved is your flight. Say, I will not miss this flight. Whatever you do, make sure you don't miss the flight. And while you are waiting for the flight, you have been equipped with the Holy Ghost to rescue as many as possible from the disaster that is looming. Your attitude should be I will not go without my daughter. I will not go without this friend. I will not go without my mommy. I will not go without my daddy. I will not go without my sibling. I will not go. Everybody that I know must go with me. Because I don't want them to go through what will happen here on earth. Say, Lord, I will not miss my flight. I will not miss my flight. Lift up your hand to heaven. Everybody. I'm close now. I will not miss this flight. Help me. Everybody that I need to save, help me to save them. Not without my daughter. Not without my father. One day I sat my father down and I said, Daddy, I just want to be sure you're going to go to heaven. You need to give your life to Jesus Christ now. He was shocked. I said, yes, now. And he gave his life to Jesus that day. And since that day, I'm at peace. If the rapture comes, not without my father. Not without my friend. Not without my neighbor. Everyone that God has assigned to you, you have a responsibility to rescue them.